SB Stadium in Kohimaramara, Auckland has been transformed from a basketball gym into the Thunderdome where eight of New Zealand's top cruiserweight K1 fighters will do battle until one remains and is crowned king in the ring. Good evening and welcome to this modern day battle for survival. I'm Dennis Katsamos and tonight promises to be entertaining, explosive and action packed. And the man responsible for this incredible event is six-time world champion Jason Psycho Sadi. Well, Jason, fighting three fights, it sounds incredibly tiring, and particularly uh, when you've got someone uh, trying to knock you out, it must be. It's, um, it's massive, uh, and it's a really good feeling when you do win it, because, mm. uh, you know, winning one fight, you come out with injuries and pain, and then you've got to endure there and go through the next one and the next one you've got to do it three times three times it's a it's a good feeling it's a good it's a good accomplishment well look, we were involved uh, with the super heavyweights last year and um that to me was some of the most gruesome fights i've ever seen um very very graphic big boys hitting hard what can we expect from the cruiserweights um okay so you get some brute force in the heavyweights uh, cruiserweights you're going to get a lot more technique a lot more skill um, along with power and along with speed. 86 kilograms isn't too big and not too light for them not to be knockouts. So there you have it. That's what we can expect from the cruiserweights here at the King of the Ring. And the beauty of this elimination style competition is the fighters do not know who they're going up against on the night until their name is drawn out of the big red bucket. Face off, gentlemen. And the draw is complete, and we're heading into quarterfinal number one. Slava Alexicic, the Sydney League Gar Boy versus Jamie Ease, the Kyokushin kid. Heading into the tail of the tape, similar in age. Alexicic slightly the shorter, more experienced in the Muay Thai ring. But the Kyokushin kid has a lot of karate bouts under his belt. And we head into the second round after an evenly contested first in what was to become a battle of attrition between two of the favourites. And once again, we see the draw can have a huge impact in this eight-man contest. These fighters really taking a toll of each other, remembering they still have another two fights after this one, if they are to be successful. Alexa Chick and Jamie Eads in what was a war as we head into the third and final round. And Eads' constant pressure starting to take toll against the Russian fighter who was also hampered by blood streaming into his eye from an accidental head clash. Leksicek just unable to find his range as Eads constantly stalked forward, landing his right hand in particular with a step over right hand into that southpaw stance. Didn't see a lot of kicks from him, which is unusual for him, a karate style fighter. It became very much a punching battle. And often that's a tactic used by fighters because they don't want to take too much damage to their legs as they head into the second and third bouts of the evening. Nice uppercut there, the favourite punch of Alexa Chick, that uppercut from the long range off the jab. But Eads just answering back whenever he is tagged in kind with two or three punches of his own. And for a Kyokushin fighter, you'll notice he keeps his hands very high, good with the left hook. A lot of guys have trouble transitioning from the karate background, but Jamie Eads has got some useful boxing skills under his belt and narrow right uppercut just missing there from Alexa Chick. In a bout that was very much a clash of styles. And Eads goes through into the semi-final after a banner of attrition. But the question will be, how much of a toll has this bout with one of the favourites taken as we head into the second round? Paddy Arfoa, the veteran, versus Kyle Gallagher, the 24-year-old from Wanganui. And the thing you notice about Gallagher, at 2.3 metres tall, he is a tower. K1 rules. Well, the rules here for tonight differ from K1 rules where you can clinch with two hands and deliver the single knee before stepping away. K1 rules is just the single hand, and that will definitely favour the taller fighter against the stalker in Tati Alfara, who has heavy hands, but not so much versatility from the outside. And a massive knee from Kyle Gallagher, leaping in from the outside. His range so hard to pick at over two metres tall. Tati Alfara caught coming in. And once you receive an eight count in these bouts, it's very hard to come back. It's just a three round bout. So a 10-8 round basically means you have to win the next two. 
just to get a draw and Gallagher just piling on those knees. Notice he cleverly lets go after firing a knee momentarily to come back with another knee. Paddy Afar really needing an eight count just to get the draw as we head into the third and final round. Just unable to cope with the height and reach advantage of Gallagher, who at this stage just needed to cover up to secure the victory, although he too looks a little worse for wear. And Gallagher advances to the semi-finals. And this is a bit of an unknown quantity between both these fighters. T.Y. Williams from Wellington and Joe Driven from the local ETK gym. T.Y. Williams comes from a boxing background, the former North Island Golden Gloves champion. Up against Joey Trevane, who is an experienced fighter with 19 bouts under his belt. And we see T.Y. Williams, very powerful, compact kind of fighter, particularly lethal with his leg kicks and a nice left hook. Good variation with his boxing combinations. And one thing you'll notice here from Williams is his timing. He's got his range down. Good high guard. Trevane just finds it more difficult to come in. He's a little bit more sloppy, more vulnerable to counter, and we see Williams doing that very effectively, despite the fact that Trevane is coming forward. A lot of those punches are being deflected, and the crisper, more powerful shots of T.Y. Williams really starting to take its effect. The Auckland fighter gassed, mouth open, really feeling it, particularly with those leg kicks. And again, a very economical bout by T.Y. Williams. And some real leg slinging from the Wellington-born fighter. Trevane in the red and white shorts, mouth open, wide stance, really struggling to balance now. Those leg kicks taking effect. Struggles to deliver multiple punches. And he's really worried about those leg kicks, which of course opens it up for the powerhouse boxing hands of Williams. And there is an unknown quantity. Williams goes through to the semi final, which heads us into the fourth and final quarter final. Francis Vesitalau, the veteran at 38 years of age, against Jana Tolak, perhaps the most heavily favoured of the fighters here in the evening. And after seeming to dominate the first round, Antolik's volume punches. He's never a fighter who isn't busy, always working the body and the head with boxing combinations in particular, throws a nasty rip to the body. And this is where controversy set in. Antolik was announced the winner, but a full fight later, it was declared a draw after a miscount from one of the judges and we had to go into a fourth and deciding round between Visitalau and Antalak. Once again, fatigue becomes a big factor in these kinds of bouts, particularly when you have to go into the fourth extension rounds. And Antalak, once again, looking like he was dominating, but Visitalau, just one round needed. And he still carries plenty of leather, plenty of iron in those fists of his, and a nasty counter puncher from the Nguyen Kiwi. Antolik, though, still looked to have it in the bag and then gets clipped by a right hand, momentarily touching down. Referee John Conway decided that was enough to issue an eight count, and that is a punch that will see Visitor Lau overcoming the favorite and going through to become the fourth semi-finalist. Crowd thoroughly entertained a record for the year as we discovered who our semi-finalists were for King in the Ring at the Cruiserweight division. And also on hand was UFC fighter Mark Hunt. Mark Hunt, uh, look, it's great to see you. First things first, what brings you down to King in the Ring? Well, I come to check out the sport, of course. So that's why I first started fighting was uh, kickboxing. So yeah, I'm here, support Jason in his show. So yeah. Does it bring back some memories? Well, it is because I started as a kick fighter and I'm, you know, predominantly a striker, so yeah. 
Look, I've got to ask you about uh, Junior Dos Santos. How's the training going? Training's going well, you know. Um, three weeks out from leaving here to the States, so I'm feeling really good and um, looking forward to the match, bro. We've been standing here doing this interview and there's been about 20, 30 people coming up to you going, Mark, I really respect you, I love what you do. Uh, that must be really humbling coming back home and seeing how much love and affection people have for, for what you do in the UFC. Well, look, man, I've been doing it for so many years now, but UFC's just made it more mainstream, you know, so it'd be good if, if, if some of the TV here support mixed martial arts, you know, uh, the whole New Zealand's always behind in the sport, you know, so, yeah, really, so... But, um, you know, Kiwis are doing big things overseas and fighting, so it'd be good to get behind us, you know? Best of luck to Mark for his fight coming up with Junior Dos Santos. So here we are. We're at the semi-final stage. Time to hand you back over to our commentator, Mike Angove. And we're heading into the first of our semi-final bouts. It is Jamie Ezi, Kyokushin Kid, 9 and 3, 188 centimetres tall, giving away 15 centimetres to the 2.03 giant from Wanganui, Kyle Gallagher. The knee assassin he's known as versus the Kyokushin kid. And again, this is about where you have to watch the range of Gallagher. He's someone who, although he doesn't necessarily look that, that uh, fashionable, he can pull off shots from nowhere. And just watching this bout very early, he's very, very confident. Throwing a couple of high kicks, a couple of change-up kicks. One place that Eads doesn't want to be is in the middle ground. Gallagher starting out strongly in this first round, first 30 seconds, looking strong as Eads tries to adjust to the range of the 2.03 meter giant from Wanganui. Eads elbows a little wide. I'd like to see him use his hands a little more to set up the leg kicks against this tall, rangy fighter in Gallagher. And again, where the rules differ, he is allowed to clinch with two hands and deliver a single knee strike. So he can afford to tie up Eads on the inside. Eads wanting to get inside and do some damage. Probably looking to go a little bit too high with that knee. Really needs to keep his focus on the punches. Perhaps kneeing just to the ribs and kicking to the legs. Slips outside the jab, coming over the top. And now starting to go to work with a riveting right hand to the body and left hook to the head. It's a punch that works well for him. Eads that left hook. Do well to double up on it. Right hook to the body, left hook to the body, and then go upstairs. One thing I've noticed from him, he's not really using his kicks at all, which is unusual from a karate fighter. He really needs to start to do that, to change it up a little bit. Comes in nicely off the left kick of Gallagher, who's just caging up in the corner as Eads goes to work with two-fisted volleys. And again, Eads probably doesn't really want to try and get the uh, forearms over the top. Best just to negate him on the inside, clasp the hands around the body to ensure Gallagher can't, can't create room to throw those high knees, which he's proved so effective with and deadly with in the first of the quarterfinals. He's quite happy to take what appear to be fairly light kicks from Gallagher on the way in and just continue to pressure him. Gallagher now with his mouth open. You know, he's smiling. Nice little spinning back kick, but Eads avoids spinning back fist, and Eads also avoids the switch up left kick as well. One of the disadvantages to being so tall is you can uh, get yourself a couple of acres when one of your legs goes over the top rope. Real work here now from Eads, de delivering two-fisted volleys, nice right hand. Really putting a lot of leverage on those shots, loading them up, hands firing away from his face. It's a round that'll go to Jamie Eads after what was a strong start from Gallagher, who seemed to wilt as we head to the corner. Experience corner there in Greg Niggs, but and Gallagher doesn't want to be there on the ropes taking those body shots. Quick glimpse of Israel Adesanya in Gallagher's corner. As we go to the highlights and we saw that body work from Eads really starting to load up on those shots to the body into the head. But the danger there with Gallagher, unpredictable, unorthodox. 
throw shots out of nowhere. And we head into round two of this three round bout in the first of our semi finals for the King in the Ring Cruiserweight eight man. Gallagher with work to do after being dominated in that first round by Eads. Starting off strongly, and he works well when he gets to. Oh, and a big right knee to the head. Jamie Yates tries to shake it off, but he was certainly hurt. And as we've seen earlier, once you go behind an eight count in these kind of bouts, it's a long road to haul to claw yourself out of the pit. He now needs to win the next round just to get a draw. Gallagher wanting to come on. Lands an uppercut, lands another overhand right. And the big knee, and each goes down. One of the favorites looks on the verge of being put out. He's struggling to regain his feet. The cobwebs are there. He really doesn't know where his legs are. He's pointing to his mouth guard. Rebel Conway, though, the referee, very experienced, not falling for that. Although these precious extra seconds as he's allowed to go and uh, put the mouth guard in, gain him a couple of minutes, a couple of extra seconds there to regain his bearings. But Gallagher straight on the attack with that long pouring jab. He really doesn't want to give Ease any time to settle. Needs to be on him while he's still rocked. And again, Gallagher trying to clamber him with the two hands and the clinch and drive the knee straight up the middle. At his height, not such a big ask. Very easy to drive it up the middle. To get an idea of how tall Gallagher is, Jamie Eads is six foot two. So he's giving away 15 to 17 centimeters in height, and he's still really rocked. Gallagher not really taking advantage of it and giving Eads a chance to come back into the bout now as Eads goes into his characteristic and favored position of pressuring Gallagher against the ropes. Eads really needs to do a lot of work to come back now, and he will be very cautious. He's been dropped and badly by those big knees of Gallagher, who has shown he can throw them from anywhere. And again, Eads just wanting to close the gap and come in. Ironically, it's also closing down his options with the hands. Like to see him kick a lot more. That's really the first kick he's thrown in the round. Again, he's throwing two fisted volleys to the body. But Gallagher has been buoyed by those eight counts. Narrowly misses with another right knee to the head. He could effectively avoid to cage up and just pick up points for the rest of the bout. And he would probably take win. Nice right leg ground kick from Gallagher. Eads coming in, although he is looking rather sloppy. And this is where you start to see, too, the impact of that first bout against Slavra Leksicic, two of the favorites going off, really took a lot out of each other. And Eads not as fresh, not as explosive as we've come to expect from him in the past. Gallagher looking fresh, had a slightly easier bout against Paddy Arfoa. And now he's getting confidence, he's found his range. And Jamie Eads goes back at the end of the second round, knowing he needs something special in order to tip over Kyle Gallagher. And there was that first knee, the right knee leaping up high from Gallagher. As he was going backwards, Eads tried to shake it off. But Gallagher landed the uppercut, a couple of left hooks, and then a big right knee. And he was truly rocked. It showed a lot of courage for Eads even to come back from that bow. Sensible corner would be telling Gallagher just to keep himself out of trouble. And he starts like a house on fire, knowing he needs to knock out Gallagher or at least get an eight count just to take this bout into an extension round. Gallagher's fairly relaxed. Showboat's there for a minute, but he has none of it on him now. Now he's starting to maul with a bit more effectiveness, pressing the forearm into the face, not allowing Gallagher the sight or any room to get his favorite clinch. Missing with that Superman punch there, Jamie Eads. Still would like to see a lot more kicks. Nice little right hand. And there again, when you're that tall, you can throw an uppercut from that range and land it. Not something you would normally see from fighters of similar height, but Gallagher can get away with it. Eads 
Comes in off the double jab, now goes to work on the body, but he needs to do something to break open the cast iron guard of Gallagher, who can afford just to sit there and take most of those shots until referee John Conway comes in, John Conway comes in to break the clinch. Gallagher moving round. Just changing angles again, that uppercut slides it inside the, in this case, right jab of Eads, who switched to south four. And precious seconds wasted there as Gallagher leans over him on the ropes. Eads now coming forward, really needs to do something special. He's really been unable to solve the puzzle to get anything else apart from body shots on the Wanganui fighter. Nice changing of angles from Gallagher. Steps in with the right hand, looking for the clinch once again. And that knee narrowly missing so high. They come up from this big fella from Wanganui. Lands a right hand, little short knee to the body. Jamie Eads really una unable to crack this tough nut. The Auckland boy, one of the favorites for this event. Looks like it lands a big uppercut there, Gallagher. Looks like he's going to go out in the semi-final round. Gallagher, unprecedented, unheard of, really, outside of uh, his hometown of Wanganui. Looks like he could be going through into the final of the King in the Ring eight man. He's still pressing forward, but he's been unable to find there's something special he needs to claw back those two eight counts from the second round. Eads moving forward, Gallagher on his bike. He's got the running shoes on, lands that uppercut and the occasional knee. And that looks like it's going to be enough. The final 10 seconds, he needs a knockout, misses with the left hook. Gallagher ties him up again in the clinch. Another knee landed, step up right hand. End of round three. Well, the pressure was put on Gallagher throughout that third and final round. He's looking for something special, but he couldn't land the killer blow. Gallagher cleverly caged up on the ropes, didn't allow him any clean shots. When the opportunity came, landed the clinch, landed the knee from the clinch, and the occasional uppercut. Eads pressing, looking for the opening, but just couldn't do the damage. The Wanganui boy, the boy from the lower North Island, marches on into the final of the King in the Ring Cruiserweight 8-man. Well, the scene is set for another Auckland versus down the line challenge. T.Y. Williams from Wellington. The 86 kilo, pretty much an amateur fighter up against the experienced veteran and professional in Francis Visitolau. Question though, how much did that four round bout against uh, Jan Antolik take its toll on Visitolau, particularly on his lead leg. And we know from the first bout, the quarterfinal bout from T.Y. Williams, that he can certainly deliver those leg slinging shots to the lead leg and the outside thigh. Very measured now, early in this round. Visitolau, wide stance. He's a nice counterfighter, even though he looks like a fire plug. He actually counterfights very well. Taking damage on that lead leg. And T.Y. Williams, crisp punches. He's one of those guys who draws your attention up top and then delivers a leg slinging, a lead lading leg slinging right low leg kick to the outside thigh. Which can prove very damaging as the fight wears on. Tight guard from Williams. Vesitalau, we've already seen from that right hand. Against Jan Antolik, he can deliver power shots. He kicks well off both legs. Guard not as tight. He's already taken a couple of leg kicks. T.Y. Williams knows what he does, and he does it well. Compact punching. Kicks the kicks fairly low. I'd like to see Vessis allow shift a little more to his right and away from the uh, right leg of Williams, forcing him to throw the left hook more. Measuring himself well. Very explosive T.Y. Williams. Looking for the opportunity. Teep to the hip. Stops that uh, right leg kick from Vesitolo having any effect. Vesitolo just circling around the ring. Conserving his energy. A wily veteran. 
He's been out of the ring for a long time. He wanted to come back and challenge himself. And he's certainly got a young gun there. And there's that big leg kick from T.Y. Williams. Mr. Talal looks a little wobbly. He may have tree trunk legs, but there's a lot of muscle being damaged there. And he's not really checking and effectively turning the knee out. Williams going with the left hook, drawing attention away from the leg again. What you call changing levels. Nice little inside thigh. Kick to the inside of the lead leg of Vesitalao, changing his balance. Nice little tie sweep under the king in the ring rules. Not a lot of credence given by the judges to that. Under tie rules, it would be given more value. Don't like the way that Vesitalao is just sitting in the corner now. With potential to become heavy bag practice, and that leg is starting to take a bounding. Williams, the Wellington fighter, trained by Mark Spencer. Has his radar on, the lead thigh of Vesitalao, and he's continuing to circle to his left, which is dangerous. It's the power shot, and you see the smack fighter from South Auckland Martial Arts noticeably limping. And the shot that does the damage, those leg kicks. Very versatile with his hands there. T.Y. Williams, Vesitalao sweeping while under a lot of pressure. Williams buries his hands, he throws the left uppercut, throws the left hook. And just when you think you've got the rhythm, then comes the low leg kick. Williams, the stalker at this point, good high guard, not allowing this to allow lead laden punches to come through and counter fighting well. Also faking, knows exactly where his range is, makes Vista to allow miss and comes with that leg kick once again. A couple of deep breaths by the Auckland fighter. Not really setting up with his hands so much, his legs are certainly hurting. Nice low leg kick, the lead leg of Williams. Vesa Talao in the blue and red shorts. Williams from Alpha Thai Boxing. Oh, and it's just heavy bag practice from Williams. Left hook, right leg, left hook, right leg. Very clinical, very effective. Vesa Talao has to do something special here, either close the gap or start to move around. And that's a power jab, a, a what you call a sledgehammer jab coming through from Williams, which again changes levels, opens it up for downstairs. Vesitalao trying to fight back. They call him the fearless one. The South Auckland fighter of New Wayan Heritage, the head trainer at Smack Martial Arts, 38 years of age, against the young gun, T.Y. Williams, only 24. And you could see Vesa Talao there. He went to leverage for that left hook. There wasn't a lot on it. And uh, that's a pretty convincing takedown. Sweep and takedown there from Williams. Vesa Talao once again, breathing deep. He's certainly taken some punishment. And that leg is going. He's starting to wilt under constant pressure from Williams. Williams just needs to just give himself a bit more room, crowding himself there. Steps back, resets himself, body shot, then goes to the leg kick again. Nice work from Williams. A lot of maturity from a fighter who's only had seven bouts. This is Talal not getting himself out of the corner, doing what he can. But you can see very conscious of getting his legs kicked, raising that leg, but there's not a lot on it. You notice he's not delivering two and three punch combinations, it's just the single shots. And he's almost whimpering away from those shots, really trying to protect that lead leg. And again, just wobble, wilting visibly under the onslaught, the barrage. Nice work with the left hand, left hook, left uppercut, and the leg goes down. This is allowed. can he get up? Can he get up from this? He has taken sustained punishment throughout the second round from Williams. The corner must be looking at him seriously with consideration to throwing in the towel. Well, certainly saved by the bell as Williams takes a commanding lead in this, the second semi-final. Nice handiwork from Williams, very educated left hand, and there was the definitive shot that sends Vesitalao down. 
leg just couldn't take it anymore. The pain was too much. Be interesting to see whether he comes out for the third and final round. They don't call him the fearless one for nothing. A very brave performance, but his corner must be watching him closely. Williams now just needs to be clinical, as he has been throughout this bout. Looks for the overhand right over the lazy jab of the fearless one. Oh, and once again, downstairs. Good work again, changing the levels. Step over, right hand. Nice versatility comes up with that left leg up high. And again, that's a punch that he used to good effect. The left hook to set up the right leg. Versatilao down. There's almost certainly no way he can win this bout. It's only sheer heart, guts and intestinal fortitude keeping him up. He says, yes, I want to continue. Sometimes a corner needs to step in and save his fighter from himself. T.Y. Williams just measuring. He's conserving himself well. Nice little step over right hand there. Switches to south for momentarily. Goes with the right switch up kick to the top from the southpaw stance. Now back into conventional with the right leg to the rear. Vesitalao now finally starts to move away. He finally starts to move to his right. Something he should have done much earlier in the bout to save the damage. And again, you can see T.Y. Williams doesn't get the leverage so much with Vesitalao shifting to his right. And that'll also open the door for more shots from uh, Mr. Talal coming back with punches of his own, but it's here when he's in the corner, just wincing visibly at the pain. Does not want to get hit at all. Wisely moving away. There's no way he can win this bout at this point unless he lands a huge shot. But the warrior spirit of Mr. Talal, he's going out on his shield. My, what an impressive performance, though, from the Wellington fighter from Alpha. He resides in Wainui Yamata. And once again, coming on strong, beautiful combination. Mixes it up beautifully. That boxing experience, body, head, right hand, left hand, saving his legs more. Going with the hands, Visitalao. He must have a cast iron jaw. He must have granite in that chin. He is not going anywhere. Bearing in mind that Williams can certainly punch. This is Talao staging a comeback of sorts. 30 seconds left in this fight, ladies and Just 30 seconds, seconds to last. Absolutely exhausted. Wild right hand slides over the top there from Williams. Doesn't need to do a lot more here. Could hop on his bike for the rest of the bout, but he's not giving up on the pressure. Looks for a high head kick. He hasn't been able to take effect with the punches. Nice right hand over the top there. Mr. Talal still coming forward. What heart. He's lost the battle against T.Y. Williams, who goes through most certainly into the final of this King in the Ring eight man, the cruiserweight 86 kilo eight man. Absolutely trounced the legs of Francis Mr. Talal as we go to the inevitable decision. Going on in the finals to face Kyle Gallacher. Would you please put your hands together for T.Y. Williams! Uh, Kyle, firstly, congratulations on making the final of King in the Ring. Uh, how was your second fight uh, against Jamie? Uh, it was just an absolute war, man. Um, yeah, this is the first time I've done two fights in one night. First time I've done three minute rounds and um, Jamie's just a beast, you know. He just came out and just put it on me. Um, yeah, never been this tired, man. I just, it was all hard at the end. I wanted to quit, but uh, just keep going, man. I managed to get the knees in there again and drop them, so pretty happy. You're up against T.Y. Uh, what are you expecting? Um, you know, it's, got, it's always going to be tough. You know, he's won two fights just like me. We're both pretty sore. We've both got bruises and, you know, our shins are sore and all that. Um, it's just going to come down to who wants it more, bro. And, um, yeah, I want it more. T.Y., I know your ice in the legs. Uh, you've had uh, seven fights uh, and you're in the final of King in the Ring. Were you expecting that? No, I was just going to be happy with making one fight. That would have been happy enough for me. But, yeah, man, I'm in the final now, so it's even happier. You fight against Francis. Um, well, have you got anything left? You guys are just gladiators. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I've got some left. <laughs> got, I've got six thousand worth left. <laughs> You're giving up a bit of height with uh, Kylie's, uh, you know, two metres three. Uh, as tall as me. 
twice as tall, as you put it. So, again, is, that, is, is the plan to get rid of his legs? Um, I don't know. Eh? I just go with whatever happens. Just go with the flow. T.Y. Williams very relaxed heading into the final, and while he took a well-deserved break, there were seven undercard fights of the evening, all worthy of a main card in any other competition. Yeah, Makira Povey, one of the up-and-coming stars in New Zealand kickboxing in the light heavyweight division. He won the IKBF World Amateur Championship. And another fighter from Wellington, Ra Redden, the brother of Rex Redden, a former world champ, against Joey Balong. And he finished that fight with style, the head kick with the left leg, then a big right hand. And the Filipino fighter from ETK here in Auckland couldn't recover. Well, Wellington boys taking home a lot of uh, gold and trophy cabinets. Edwin Sami going up against Brendan Vati, the veteran Sami. He's a little unpredictable, but Vati, the boy again from down the line from Masterton, took home the honours again. And Richie Hardcore Stewart against Hayden Todd in what was a really epic battle. It went into the fourth round, but Hardcore, the boy from the Hardcore Gym, originally Lee Gar, takes out his retirement fight in style. Which takes us to the big beef, Andrew Peck. The inaugural K1 super heavyweight winner versus Tuffer Missipati, the current king in the ring super heavyweight champ. And as we've seen tonight, the leg kicks take a huge effect on power punches. Peck just taking out the legs of Missipati. Too much, the veteran who hasn't fought for a couple of years, setting the scene for the king in the ring, cruiserweight, 86 kilo, eight-man final between Tai T.Y. Williams and Kyle Gallagher. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the main event of the evening. Would somebody somewhere please make some noise? Well, the crowd certainly making a lot of noise. It is final time, and noticeably, no Aucklanders in this bout. The tall tower from Wanganui, 2.03 meters tall, the knee assassin. He's had a couple of very tough bouts as he heads into this final and unexpected finalist in this cruiserweight eight man. Superb victory over Jamie Eads, one of the favorites heading in. Question remains, how much is it taken out of Gallagher's sails? going to be a clash of styles. T.Y. Williams, he's short, he's compact, power leg kicks, great combinations with his hands. The Wainuyamata fighter, based in Wellington, trained by Mark Spencer from the Alpha Gym. He has proved no less impressive. Again, an upset finalist. This goes to show you never can tell in these eight-man contests. Well, you'll see these two fighters come together and it's immediately apparent 2.03 centimeters versus 170 centimeters. There is 86 kilos even similar in fight experience. Both fighters from down the line. Wanganui Gallagher in the blue and white shorts, the green and black of the Alpha Gym for T.Y. Williams. Gallagher wants to stay at range. He doesn't want to let Williams come in. Nice compact guard there by Williams. And good work immediately. And we haven't seen anyone do that to Gallagher. Take his support leg at all. Good tactics there. Gallagher trying to find range with that long pouring jab. Gosh, it's very much a David and Goliath bout. And the right knee narrowly misses there. The very composed T.Y. Williams, the tight guard. His range is very much on. Nice work with the leg kick, although Gallagher started this first round strongly. A teep, a right leg front kick, going to the hip or midsection of Williams. The high left kick taken on the gloves. Gallagher, nice work of his, staying in tight. And again, we haven't seen enough of that from other fighters who've come up against Gallagher, clasping his hands around the waist and preventing him from room, coming in to fire those knees, although we can see there Gallagher can fire them from almost anywhere when he's given the range. 
Nice combination, one, two. Right heel kick from Gallagher, taken on the gloves there by Williams. But range from Williams, very good. Needs to do a little bit more at this point. Again, a high head kick, switch up head kick. Now Williams going to work, body head with the left hand. Would have been useful to string on an overhand right, and there we see it. Teep to the hip, returned in kind there from Gallagher. Those kind of annoying techniques to the legs and to the hip will work well for Williams. Nice right hand, left hook, doubles up, triples up, goes to the body. Gallagher shakes it off, but I can tell you for sure, it certainly caught his attention. He's a very measured fighter, T.Y. Williams. He's now only had, well, this is his ninth bout. Came in this evening with just the six under his bout, but showing a lot of composure. Gallagher too, his unorthodox. Style, nice doubling up of the left hook there and a right hand over top. And again, Williams just clamping him around the waist, not allowing Gallagher any room to get his favoured clinch and knee to the head on. He's a little bit lazy with that jab. Doesn't return straight to his chin. Nice check there. Lanky leg kicks. Williams knows his range he has it down pat and again that's something that we haven't seen from fighters having to deal with Gallagher just ghosting out of range Williams a good pair of eyes on him knows where he's at knows his game is sticking to it at this stage it's the uh, twin shots of Gallagher from the outside versus the power shots of Williams depends on what the judges favor hard round to pick as we head into the towels, the end of the first round of this, the final of the Cruiserweight Eight Man, brought to you by Psycho Supplements. Plenty of advice from the corners. We see one of the Redden brothers there giving some good advice, Mark Spencer as well. T.Y. Williams, pretty effective with the shots he threw, very economical throughout the bout. Knows his range, just narrowly missed being sconed by a knee there. But he's been very effective with his range. Nicely landed that overhand right, tripled up on the left hook. And those definitive shots, perhaps enough to get him the round as we see the goal, the trophy that will be on show to the winner tonight. T.Y. Williams versus Kyle Gallagher as we head into the second of this three round final bout. This one will brought to you by Psycho Supplements. Really loves that left hook. T.Y. Williams, and again, just smart. Just really ties it up. The rules here for King in the ring. You're only allowed to fire, fire the one knee, and then the referee will break you up. Allow Williams to go back to his preferred punching range. Gallagher not able to find his range. T.Y. Williams absolutely certain of where, we, where he is. Very cautious. Very e economical with what he does throw. Come on, good people, let's make some noise in here now. What do you say? <laughs> Through that one from around the angles. Nice targeting of that lead thigh from Gallagher. Now Gallagher has been one who's going to have to change his rhythm and do something different. Going with the front kick, but once again, Williams just ghosting out of range, slips inside the jab, throws the leg kick. Good to see him come back upstairs with that left hook that he throws so well. Change up, kick from Gallagher. Looping long, loping shots, not a lot of sting on them. Hasn't yet really got Williams' respect. Williams going for the back leg there. Gallagher just slipping momentarily. Now going for that lead kick, and now the favoured clinch. Now he's needing to come on strong. Gallagher. A little bit wild with the shots, not as effective, not as accurate as Williams, who covers up. Now coming back strong, the inside left kick to the lead thigh. Gallagher breathing deeply. Williams faking nicely. And those fakes really can cause another fighter to commit. Slips outside the right hand there, triple. Quadruple hooks. Oh, there's a right hand. Right hand knee there from Gallagher. Momentarily calls Williams to wobble. But he's got a bit of iron content in that gin. Comes forward straight away. 
Doesn't allow Gallagher room to deliver a second coup de grace as we saw with Jamie Yeeds. Looks pretty well recovered. Gallagher really needs to now start throwing. Not a lot of confidence now from Gallagher. He's cautious about being countered by Williams. Just stalking the alpha Muay Thai fighter from Wellington. Finding his range, Gallagher needs to turn up his output. Otherwise, the scoring, the judges will favor the more aggressive fighter. Williams coming on then with another low leg kick, right hand, left hook, and again, tying up on the inside. Well, that's a hard round to pick. The only real clean shot landed was uh, Gallagher's big knee. Williams, the more aggressive. Probably landed the harder shots throughout the round. Still a very closely contested bout. Williams perhaps nudging ahead as we head into this third and final round of this, the K1 86 kilo cruiserweight king of the ring. And there we see T.Y. Williams going to town with that left hook. Like David Tua, he nods and said that didn't have much effect. You can see the claret coming down his nose. And that's the danger of Gallagher. That knee from nowhere. It was the left knee high. And the bling that is on the line. The king in the ring, cruiserweight strap. Who will it be? Gallagher in the blue and white, or T.Y. Williams in the black and green? Wanganui versus Wellington. Who will be the top cruiserweight in New Zealand kickboxing ranks? Gallagher really needing to do something special. He is probably behind on the cards. We've seen he can pull an eight count out of nowhere. But Williams has been the aggressor and landed the cleaner shots. Those are just light leg kicks. Gallagher loves that left hook. And again, he sticks to the game plan. Tying him up in the clinch. Gallagher now needs to put his hands across the face. Rough up Williams to create room for his knees rather than just wait for the referee to break. Not using his range as effectively as we'd like. Nice work there. Uppercut left hook going with the head kick there from Gallagher. But Williams not really phased. Tight guard, taking a lot of it on the gloves. Looking for that good night Irene overhand right over the lazy jab of Gallagher. It's a long way up for the 170 centimeter tall Williams, nice work, overhand right, then digs down to the body with the left hand. And shuts down Gallagher on the clinch, the only fighter we've seen who's been able to do that effectively. Inside thigh kick, disrupting the balance of Gallagher. Those flashing shots, he's not setting up, he needs to throw those off his hands, otherwise T.Y. Williams, who knows his range well, and has a good set of Defensive skills on him, won't be fooled. And again, just missing with those shots. The hands to set up the knees or the kicks to set up something. There's the right knee, just missing. He certainly needs to pull something out of the bag. A rabbit out of the hat, Gallagher, as he slowly but surely appears to be falling behind on the judges' cards. Nice low leg kick once again from Williams. Doubling up on the jab, right hand over the top. And a good game plan again, just tying up Gallagher on the inside. Raising left hook misses, shifting. Now that's good work from Gallagher. Let's go momentarily, throws the left hook and then clamps around the waist again. A lot of experience, well, a lot of maturity really from a fighter who's so inexperienced. The ability to stick to a game plan just pulls himself out of trouble. Nice right hand left hook there, doubling up. Williams knows his range, shifts angles well. Gallagher trying to throw something special. Again, he's failing to set up single shots at this point. Williams seems to have his measure. Gallagher needs to do something and do it fast as the seconds tick away. Now Williams starting to come on strong, catching the judges' attention with crisp combinations. Well, there it is. It goes to the judges' scorecards. T.Y. Williams or Kyle Gallagher, both from the lower North Island. As we go to the replays, 
and it appeared to be the crisp combinations of Williams starting to take its toll on Gallagher, who just couldn't find the answer as he was able to do in his quarterfinal and semi-final bout. Ladies and gentlemen, can we please have a round of applause for our two finalists here tonight? Superior boxing and ability to stick to a game plan. See some take home $6,000 in cash and the goal back to Alpha Thai Boxing in Wellington. T.Y. after the semi-final, you said to me you're the least experienced fighter here. Did you expect to be standing here as the king in the ring? I wanted to, but um, I knew it was a hard ask, but I'm here now, so yeah. Look at it. <laughs> now, I asked you earlier on um, what this meant in terms of winning the King in the Ring. What does it mean to you? It means, um, wow, so much actually shocked, eh? I'm just, yeah, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, it's awesome. You're based in Wainui Amada. You Look, as I said, you've had 10 fights, including tonight. Is it, uh, is it a career path for you? Is it something that you want to pursue? May we see a, a lot more of you in the future? Yeah, I hope so. Uh, just, just inside me, I don't know why. It's just in there. Yeah, this is what it is, just yeah. This is, I just fight. Just feel the passion for it. And I've got to ask you, is there anyone you want to shout out to? Uh, I'd like to say thank you to Tua Woods, uh, Russell, Joe, Corey, everybody from Alpha, uh, all the supporters, whole of Wainui, yeah. Check. <laughs> Congratulations, the 2013 Cruiserweight King in the Ring, T.Y. Williams. Thanks. Cheers. Well done to the man from Wainui Yamada and also a big thank you to our commentator Mike Ango. Don't forget, coming up in July, it's the middleweight category, the 72 kilo king in the ring. You know you never see us coming. So no point running. Yeah, yeah, we gotta bring it on tonight. Turn this little body into one big fight. Singing, yeah, yeah, we gotta tear the place down. This content was proudly made right here in New Zealand.